One of the tools within our swing toolkit is our auto Fibonacci indicator or auto retracement indicator. Now to turn that on, I simply click on this icon here that says Fib for Fibonacci. And what this does is it looks at the various swings and it automatically outputs all the various retracements for those swings and the relationships between those swings. What it also does is it highlights, you can, you can customize which, uh, for example, Fibonacci numbers or, or whatever important level that you want to make note of, you can have it highlight those numbers. So let me go into the parameters by clicking on this to, just as a shortcut into the indicators dialog box here. Click on my auto Fibonacci indicator here. Um, I can go in here and, and highlight and modify what levels are important to me. And I can adjust each one by different color or different line thickness or appearance, in however you like. One thing that I personally like is for the 61.8, which is the golden ratio, I like to change that to a, uh, you know, a nice uh, gold color. And for example, um, and I'll make that maybe a little, little bit larger. Hit OK there. And as you can see, the 618 is now, is now gold. Now, right now I have it set pretty, pretty simple to just look at one swing back. So it's only looking at the previous high or the previous low here. I can set this to two, which will make it look at two swings back and add additional retracements and different um, additional uh, um, uh, values to, to, this, to this chart here. You can go all the way up to five, which might be a little bit much, um, but it will show you uh, it will go back and um, output uh, you know, a whole lot of retracements all over your chart. So that may not be a setting that you want to keep on all the time, but maybe for a larger chart or a larger time frame chart, something like that uh, uh, would, would particularly make sense. Uh, you can, of course, adjust the size of these, uh, these labels. Uh, the ones that are not highlighted. For example, as we went in earlier, we adjusted the size of the 61.8 label, but all of these that do not match any of these highlighted uh, levels, you will fall under this category of, um, of size. Now the fudge factor percent, now that's, that's really a, a tolerance uh, level. What that means is for it to actually match one of these highlighted levels, the chances of the market hitting this to the tick at 61.8%, for example, is relatively rare. Uh, so what you really need is you just need a little bit of tolerance there. So if it, if it is plus or minus 3%, of that level, then treat it as that level. So, so what that means is 3%, uh, 61 would be 64, 64.8% 64 uh, down to what, 58.8%. So somewhere in that range, this would still be considered a 61.8 and it would highlight as 61.8. Uh, and that, that's what this, you can adjust what that tolerance is. Now, the highlight percent instead of real. So if, if this doesn't actually hit 61.8, um, it, you can have this output as, for example, in this case, the real pullback percentage was actually 64.57. It actually wasn't 61.8, but it was within that range. And so we want to uh, have it output, you know, what the actual highlight percentage is. But if you want it to just, um, just output that you can, you can uh, there as well. Uh, another example, just to highlight this um, this tolerance level here, you can see over here the 78.6%. This this retraced um, from from here to here was 68.6. I mean, sorry, excuse me, 78.6. But then this one here down to here, up to here, 75.53. Now that is. If you, if you add three based on our tolerance there, that would be 78.53. Now that did not, that's, it's extremely close, but that is not within 
that's not a 78.6 because it is more than 3% away from our, our factor there. And if I were to change this to, you know, say 3.5%, then that, that applied at that point because it was within our tolerance there. This just, just, to, just to highlight uh, what exactly that, that is, is doing for you. Um, if you want to hide all of these that don't match any of our uh, major levels, you can hide all those and have it only highlight uh, if it's hitting one of our, um, our highlighted levels. If you want it to be a little bit more or less exact as far as the percentages that get outputted, uh, outputted here, you can adjust this uh, decimals to, to, um, to output. Um, if you want to really simplify your chart, you can adjust the amount of swings to handle. So in this case, you know, it's, it's going through and it's, it's highlighting uh, all of our swings. Now, if you want to just set this to say, say two, for example, go back to our chart and go back to, uh, you know, current price over here, it's only looking at this most recent swing here. Um, and let me adjust it again. something a little bit larger you can see it, it's it's outputting you know these these first five swings and its various relationships based on what we uh, the other settings here so if you want to just focus on just what's going on uh, right here right now you can simplify its output uh, right there now output unofficial swing so as the market is is moving it may not make a sw an official swing yet as far as the definitions are concerned for our zigzag goes, but it can output a, um, a, uh, the amount of that retracement uh, which could be undone. So for example, say the market you know, went down here and started retracing up here, but it, it didn't move enough to count as a new swing but then eventually came back down, it would output an unofficial, unofficial retracement amount, but it could be undone by if the market ends up continuing and just simply extending this swing downward. So you can have it output um, an unofficial swing retracement, and if you want to highlight uh, that that it is un unofficial you can have you can, you can tweak that text right there this next option to have an extra highlight of the latest matched pullback now what that means is if in, in this particular case the latest pullback here does not match one of our, our highlighted levels so it's not this isn't going to do anything in this particular example so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust our tolerance here to force this to match a highlighted level, even though it, it might be uh, a little bit extreme. I'm going to just add, you know, make this a 10, which uh, we know that this is relatively close to the 61.8. So if I have a if I have a tolerance of 10 here, this will 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 match it and hit apply, you see it did match the 61.8 based on extending this larger. I just want to point out what this behavior does. And what that does is it, it's showing that, you, you notice these blue lines here, that this latest pullback matches one of our, our highlighted levels. It's just a little extra emphasis to say, look, look at this pullback here. It, it, it's, a, it's a major uh, level here. And you can adjust its appearance and and line thickness, etc. I'm going to quickly disable that, and I'm going to put this back to the the little bit, a little more uh, reasonable tolerance level there. Before going on to our next next setting here, now uh, I'll put the current um, swing Fibonacci retracement level. So what that does is right now we're making a low move. So if this were to retrace, then it would retrace up upwards this direction. And I'm going to automatically, see the current swing, automatically output the 61.8, the 786, and the 886. And those are the three that are defined right here. And so it's automatically just outputting 
where are these levels based on this move right here? And of course you can you can adjust those. Now last two swings is if you look at as I just described, if it were from here to here, these are the retracement levels, or from this low up to this high, and then down, you can see here we're hitting, um, you know, we just went past the 61.8, which makes sense. We've made to the 69.46 level, so that's where these levels are as well. So again, you can customize what which one's output there, whether you want the actual prices to appear here, uh, the, the colors of these labels, now this next one, which is, is able to output alerts based on these retracements. So in this particular example, if you want it to output an alert, uh, if, if we have a 61.8% retracement, if it hits it, uh, if it's greater or equal to this, this amount, have it output an alert. Now, um, now it makes it clear here that it's an official swing. So what that means is that if, if the price were to go up, up here, it doesn't necessarily make it an official swing until it satisfies our settings as far as the zigzag goes. In this particular case, it needs to break the past five bars. So the price might be able to, depending on if these are really large bars or not, you know, have a 61.8% retracement and not break the past five bars. So in this case, if, if price were to go all the way up here and hit the 61.8% retracement, it wouldn't necessarily, it would only break one, two, three bars. So that wouldn't be an official swing in this particular case. This one would, and you can see that the, uh, the zigzag is, is highlighting that this, this as an official swing. So this, this would have been, have an alert here if you had this set at 61.8. As you can see, there's a lot of great features in this in this indicator. There's a lot of a lot of customizations, a lot of things that you can tweak and have it output automatically that I feel like could be useful no matter what your style of trading is. Uh, you know, regarding uh, Fibonacci and retracements, and you could really simplify this to to just a few things or have it output you know quite a bit as as I showed before. With, with a lot of retracements and a lot of, um, let me go back to this, outputting everything here. Uh, so if you have any questions about this, please email me at daniel at updown.com, that's U-P-P-D-N-N.com, and best success in your trading.